And now, a message from Awakening International Church. Good morning. Welcome back, everybody on streaming. And good morning to Awakening International Church. It's good to be here with everybody. What do we think of the worship, huh? Just preach the whole word. Preach the whole sermon. Did a great job. I don't think you left out any scripture or anything. So I'm just here to reiterate <laughs> or whatever all God has in store here. But um, it's, it's awesome. I do believe that these words were ordained for this morning. Um, God has his perfect timing, does he not? Yes, he does. So what I'm going to talk about is going to the next level, exactly what we did. Amen? Amen? I mean, wow, you know? This is wonderful. So we've all heard those words, haven't we, at one time or another, next level? And actually, it's a rather recent phrase. It hasn't really been out that long um, that it's been actually used and documented, okay? But sometimes we use words for the next level like promotion. You're going to get a promotion. Um, a new level, um, higher level, come up higher, we've heard them, advance, and there's many, many more, but you know, they pretty much all mean the same thing when someone's talking to you, is um, not only in your, your life, but your spiritual life. Um, and then the actual definition of next level is a better, more advanced, or more successful situation. <laughs> Does everybody want a more successful situation in their life? Oh, let's raise two hands. Okay, for that one. Yes, we do. And we want to advance. We don't want to stay stagnant and still. So that's what we're here this morning, this afternoon to find out about a little bit more. Um, I thought a really good example because of um, what we're doing um, that they gave was um, a sentence. She wants a coach who can take her game to the next level. If things work out, the two of you can take it to the next level and start making long-term plans. Amen? That speaks volumes when it comes to our spiritual life, that we're not going to stay here. We're not going to stay miserable. We're not going to stay because that's really what you are <laughs> when you're not at the level where you need to be. And I believe that God's grace and glory this morning, I truly believe with all my heart, took us to the next level. I'm not going to say we're overdue because his timing is perfect, but I know he took all of us to another level, each of you individually and each of us corporately and that's the point that I wanted to make is that you know I always thought that like uh, we um, corporately that's usually given or even probably perhaps in a classroom situation or in a job situation but definitely definitely there is a personal higher level for all of us and we need to walk in it we don't walk out the doors and we don't just leave it oh well we got to the next level church oh we yippee yippee what about you in your personal life. I want the next level in my personal life. Do you not? Amen. Well, good. I'm glad you're in agreement with me so far. And I, can t I believe you're going to be with, stay there with me. Um, there's some synonyms for it as boost. And that's, that's very real in this situation. <laughs> Let's give it a boost. Develop and expand. All good words. All good words that are not narrow and small. Okay. Alrighty, so we're going to start off with a scripture which we already hit, but we'll hit it again. Um, 2 Corinthians 3, 16 through 18, because I believe that scripture's definition is that we go from glory to glory. Amen? That's what you're actually doing. You're always continually growing. You're always continually growing for God's glory because that's what we were created here for. Amen? Yes, we were. Okay, so to drive that point home, um, I'm going to start in, um, um, like I said, 2 Corinthians 3, 16 through 18. Let me see here. Um, in the New King James, I believe it is, her King James Version. Okay, let's go here. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. <clears throat> now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, freedom. But we all, <laughs> we all, with open face as in a glass, the glory of the Lord are changed. We're transformed. 
That's the only way we're truly transformed and taken up higher. Into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Scholars estimate that it only took about 60 days of wandering in the desert, <laughs> only 60, um, for the Israelites to relapse into their old ways of thinking and rebel against Moses and Aaron. They were delivered from centuries, centuries of bondage, and it only took two months to forget God's goodness and start complaining. Because I'm here to do, um, the point I'm trying to make is, that we don't want to go back into our odd cycles. This is how to stay transformed, okay? So they prayed for a miracle. Did they ever get it? But miraculous deliverance was only the first step. Though physically free from bondage, they were still slaves in their hearts. And that's where the problem lies. And when you try to tell a slave... <laughs> That they're not free, but family? Wow, on top of not, oh, you're free, but guess what? Even more, you're part of our family. Huh, imagine. No. Okay, but we can, because we've been there. It's going to take more than a miracle for them to believe it's true. So that's still true for us today. 4,000 years since the Exodus, 2,000, um, excuse me, 2,000 years on the far side of the cross. Those of us who are in recovery from things like addiction, mental health problems, suicidal thoughts, and even all out sin continue to relapse into those same vicious cycles, which we want out of, right? Amen? But what's that cycle look like? Like we get saved? We get sober, we relapse, and again, we get saved. We get sober, we relapse again, and again, and again, and again. And if you think I'm just referring to those people, <laughs> I, we need to embrace that truth of recovery because Everyone has been in recovery in some way. I know we call it deliverance, but there's even steps after deliverance because that can last in your life. It's called transformation. So when freedom from bondage comes miraculously as it did for the Israelites, we must not confuse the deliverance we prayed with our ultimate destination. Like, okay, well, now I'm here. Well, yes, we want to we get there, but we're stay and how, this is how to stay there, okay? It's a step on your journey towards hope, healing, and a total life transformation. No matter how big that first step is, we still have a long way to go, but even more importantly, to grow beyond that, okay? We can't just stay there. Okay, I did it, and this is where I am, and I'm going to stay here, and it's not going to get any better. No, it just keeps getting better. The process goes on and on and on. You just keep getting healed, more healed, and more healed, and you know, it's great. It's wonderful, because it can, it happens, all right? Okay, but um, here's the problem. When we can't even see and I, I've seen this so many times, I just had to bring this out. Um, when we can't even see potential for a transformed life, we will inevitably go back to what we know, even if it leads to death, which is a real mind blower, right? Amen? Oh, come on. Can't you even uh, see what happened to that person when they did this, this, and this? You know what? Doesn't matter. That veil is over, still over their eyes. They haven't been delivered. They haven't continued to be delivered and embraced it. So, okay, so slave and orphan spirits can keep us perpetually discontented, locked into a victim mentality. And when we don't break those spirits off in Jesus' name, <laughs> amen, we, we embody them as part of our core identity. Can you imagine embracing an evil spirit, a negative spirit in your life? No, it becomes part of you until you get delivered, people. That's why, obviously, we know it's so important. Okay, but it doesn't have to be this way. When we have that genuine face, like we did this morning, face-to-face -face encounter with good daddy God <laughs> of transformation, we can all draw close to him with veils removed from our faces, 
with no veil, we all become like mirrors who brightly reflect the glory of the Lord Jesus. In 2 Corinthians 3.8 in the Passion Translation, we are being transfigured into his very image as we move from one brighter level <laughs> of glory to another. And this glorious transfiguration comes from the Lord who is spirit and those who worship him in spirit and truth. Amen. So I started off with that. I didn't end with that. I started off with that. Okay, for a reason. Because we're here to answer those questions. Why do we want to stay where we're at? Why don't we want to move to the next level? Believe it or not, you have a choice in this matter. And even the things that keep you from going there. Why go to the next level? Why bother? Isn't this good enough? No, it's not. It'll never be good enough until we're gone. And, to, and we get to those pearly gates in heaven, okay? How do we get to the next level? So how do we do this? Okay, so I'm going to answer those questions. And what we started off this morning in worship, Philippians 3, 7 through 17. I'm going to read to you. Um, I will just go to 15. But whatever was to my profit, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ, Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them rubbish or garbage, <laughs> that I may gain Christ and to be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own <laughs> that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God and is by faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow to attain to resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained all this or have already been made perfect, <laughs> but I press on to take hold of that which for Christ Jesus took hold of me and you. <laughs> Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but the one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead. We can't be told that often enough, people. <coughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. All of us who are mature should take such a view of things. And if on some point you think differently, that too God will make clear to you. Hmm. There is no standing still in God. We cannot, as the church, allow ourselves to bask in the glory days. This also came out. But I'm going to remind you again <laughs> of awakening or the last mission trip you took. <laughs> or even the last sermon I preached, all right? <laughs> what glory days were there there? Nothing now. Now, because, see, it was already preached, so it already seems like, I don't want to say old to me, so I'm not ready for something new, okay? All right, so, because we, we attain this worship, all right? But we must, we must, we must press on and follow God and continue to grow. We must. Not it's an option. I get you do have a choice, but we must. Okay. Uh, John Maxwell said, the road to the next level is always uphill. And don't look at that negatively, and I don't think you will after what we just went through this morning. It's a good thing because God desires for you. That's how you grow, and then you're going to attain that level to get to another level, all right? So why do we want to stay where we're at in our comfortable place, especially when it's not even comfortable? Not really, if you're being honest with yourself, is it? You're like... I want some more wiggle room. You know, I want to grow. <laughs> I just need to get out of this spot. It is killing me. That's what it's doing. It's killing you. Get out of it. God desires for you to grow. 
not Apostle Brian, but although he would be real happy if you would. <laughs> but you out there, we all need to grow. Okay. But so why do we want to stay? We forget that time waits for absolutely nobody. Not you or me or that person that is 103. Time waits for no one. God has all given us a measure of days, it says in the word of God. We need to walk those measure of ways and grow those measure of ways in the way that he's showing you how to walk and grow. All right? You need to use them wisely. You don't need to look, and I just had this experience in my family, and look at them and think, gee, Lord, I wonder if there is anything more that they needed to do. I wonder if their life could have been more. You don't want to lay in that grave. <laughs> <laughs> and say that you want to die, as we've said here before, and I think I did preach this, die empty. You want to achieve and go to the levels of everywhere God showed you to go. Your life is much too important to God. If it's not important to you, it's important to God. So that's good enough. <laughs> Or to that person next door, whatever. You know, I don't care what they think about me. I don't care what they're saying about me. I don't care. I don't care. But I do care. I do care. I do care what God thinks about me and what I'm doing and what I'm not doing. He's saying, you know, you've been there far too long, far too long. Let's get up and move. Let's get some fire under that bottom and get moving. You've been there too long. And that's what you're seeing when you're laying there wondering like, oh my goodness, wow, what could, what could have it been like for them? You know, not necessarily like with regrets or, or whatever, but like, wow, what it could have been. You know, just take a lesson, <laughs> take a lesson, okay? All right, so where was I? Um, <laughs> time is this a plan, it's only non, Renewable resource. You can't reuse it in any way. It's not going to come back as much as you may think you want it to. It's not going to come back. It's going to move on. And that's a good thing. Quit looking that at that as a negative. I mean, maybe all of you don't, or maybe nobody does. But you could be, but we'll show you where, okay? So next, what happens is, if we don't want to move up, is we lose interest in our everyday life. Like, you hear words like, fill in the blanks, <laughs> like, uh, same old, same old. How's things going? Oh, same old, same old. Oh, okay. Um, anything new going on in your life? No? No? Uh-uh. Huh. Wow, okay. Anything else I could ask him? Maybe I could get some information. You know, <laughs> come on. There's no more to your life than this. Yes, there is, people. Yes, there is. And if, there, if you can't speak it, and if you can't identify it, which is the important thing, then go to God. <laughs> because I, I can't either. So that you do truly, truly are living for a purpose. You are here for a real reason. You're not here just to settle. <sighs> you're, you're settling. No more settling. It's not up for grabs. Time is too short. God does have a designated time for you to be where he wants you to be. Okay. Um, we lack hunger. I talked about that too. Cindy Trim writes, your life should continually take on the characteristics of 3 John 2. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health, not disease, health. <laughs> Just as your soul prospers, your soul has its own kind of appetite. <laughs> Matthew 5, 5, 6. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. <laughs> Blessed are those for what? They, say it with me, they shall be filled and satisfied. Yes, amen. Filled, not half empty, not lacking anything, absolutely nothing. Nothing. 
filled to the top and overflowing like we talked about this morning. That is the life that he wants for all of us. Every single day, not just on Sundays, not just whenever we congregate together, but every single day, you can live your life. Your life can be like that and believe it, people. Believe it. Okay, opportunities respond to those that are not satisfied. If you're lacking seeing opportunity, well, how, how could I? I just live here. I am just this person. I am just that person opportunities. There's plenty of them. We pray that God opens eyes and reveals them and sees them to you all because they are there. We just are not, for one reason or another, seeing them because we've lost interest in seeing them. Well, you know, this is the way my life, I guess, is going to go. The cap's on it, and that's where it's at. Well, guess what? After saying that, that's where you're going to be. The cap's going to be on your life. You aren't going to see no opportunities. Your life is going to be so boring. <laughs> like the kids say to you, they're bored when there's no excitement going on. Okay, there's plenty of excitement. Because God's called us to each and every place that we're all in a different place. And it's extremely exciting. Extremely. You know, I can't even tell you to come over to my house to get any excitement because my excitement and where God wants me, it's totally different than where, well, in a sense, but yes, different than where he's taking you. You need to look for your own opportunities and go after them. Just there it goes. Oh, there'll be another one come by. You know what? Pretty soon you're saying that all the time about everything. You know, stop it. Just stop it now. I know because I live this way. <laughs> I mean, it's not a pretty place to be. Trust me. You don't want it. You don't want it. And it doesn't need to be this way. Okay. Hallelujah. Next, we don't want to pay that high price, do we? It's too much. It's going to cost me way too much. And you know what? God said that I can settle down here, and I can just do this, and I can be under this person and do that with that person, and I can copy this person. Oh, no, you can't. You just think you can. <laughs> you really, really cannot. We need to be willing to pay the price. God's not going to make you. He's not going to lay you down and put chains on you. No, nope, he's not. He's not. Well, well, God will get my attention some way. He'll make it all right. No, he won't. Not if you're not truly, truly willing to pay that price and not get it on somebody else's coattails. I'm not saying that you don't join with people in a vision or whatever. God will show you that too. But you still have your own unique calling. Every single one of you. And to that unique calling, there is a high price. And I'm here to stand and tell you, and I'm sure there's many more in here that can say that. I guarantee you without a shadow of a doubt that if you are and have paid that high price, then you're on your way. Because God, there's no other way of getting it. There's no other way. Because you know why? It's God's glory. It's not yours. It's not mine. It's not Awakening International's. It's not your family. It's not anybody. That's why. That's why. That's why it's worth a high price. And it's really high. And guess what? I'm here to encourage you. It can get higher. <laughs> yeah. But that is an encouragement. And I know that's hard to look at, so maybe we better back. <laughs> it's still worth it. But that's what we really have to decide. And we need to mean that. And we need to mean that with all of our hearts, all of our minds, all of our souls, and all of our spirits. Okay. It's going to cost you something. And there's going to be personal sacrifice. 
and that is going to continue. I know we've heard like next level, next devil. Well, yeah, in a sense, because yeah, there's that high price and there's that personal sacrifice, but it's worth it. But that's what you all, we all need to decide for ourselves whether it is worth it or not. I pray you decide it's worth it, and I can deciding that it is worth it. Okay, B, why do we go to the next level? Why do we move on? Why do we need to advance anyway? It's super good here. We can ride on this morning's worship for the next three months, you know? Ha-ha. <laughs> <laughs> You'd like to think so, wouldn't you? Okay, nothing drains the life out of you like stagnation. That's what I said. You just preached my whole sermon. <laughs> we do not want to stay in the place that we're at. We need to want to advance. We need to want to move to the next level that God has for us. Yes. We need to want. Okay. We need to, ex number two, we need to experience uh, victory when we reach the next level. Doesn't everybody need a victory in their life? Oh, well, you know, here's these sacrifice people. <laughs> oh, gee, well, I must be growing because I've had to give up this. I've had to do the, that. Yak, 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 yak. Complain, 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 complain. Well, you know what? That's definitely not going to get you to the next level. <laughs> Including me. <laughs> no, it's not. We do need to experience. I was actually talking with Bev this week, and that's what she said. We all need to experience some victories. There's nothing wrong with having a victory after victory after victory after victory. Amen? Amen? Yeah. It doesn't need to be problem, 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 problem. Oh, come on. <laughs> really. <I'm laughs> oh, Vince Lombardi said, <laughs> let me tell you what winning means. You're willing to go longer, work harder, and give more than anyone else. Are you willing to give more than that? Well, you know, that's all that person had to do to get there. You know, we, that's, that's all you really have to do. You don't have to do this. You don't have to do those little things that matter. <laughs> yes, you do. Every single time. Because you know who's watching? God's watching. He's watching how faithful you are. He's watching when you care. He's watching when you give. He's watching when you take that personal right. You know what? This time is mine. And I'm not saying you don't need to take time for yourself. You do. But whenever you give up your personal rights, that's commitment. And you're going to grow whenever you give up some of those things. Okay. But that's, I think that's supposed to be later. But that doesn't matter. Okay, we're created for conquest. We need to win and be victorious from time to time. You know why? In order to stay fulfilled in our divine purpose. We need to be with people that see us win. We need to be with people that say, raw, raw, great job. We need to say, you know, I see you need an encouragement today. We do need that, and there isn't anything wrong with that. Because you know what? We aren't ever, even though you may feel like it at times and you feel like you're living it, we aren't ever just losing all the time. No, we're not. Not ever. Don't you let hell tell you that for one minute. You're not losing every day. You aren't, oh, well, I'm like, there's no victory in this. There's no victory in that. Pretty soon, that word lose is taking over your vocabulary as opposed to victory. Let's start speaking more victory as opposed to, or see the victory and the difficult. See the victory in what we feel is a loss. Let's see and have, the, um, excuse me, have it revealed to us through God, the victory revealed through him. Not somebody or the world, you know? That, then you are, that's losing. That's not winning. Okay, let's go to Genesis 1, 26 through 28. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over livestock, over all the earth, over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female, he created them. 
and they know what they are, male or female. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase, oops, did they, oops, be fruitful and increase in number, fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Let them rule, increase, subdue the earth, rule over every living creature. What's that equal? Dominion. Let them take dominion. God said, let us rule over the earth. He's called us to do that. That's what we're made for. That's what we're designed for. To take dominion. Psalm 118, 14 through 15. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has given me victory. Songs of joy and victory are sung in the camp of the godly. The strong right arm of the Lord has done glorious things. God is glorified, people, when we reach the next level. We glorify God. I think I kind of said that before, but I'm going to say it again. You d we don't smash that down. We don't ignore it. We, don't, we give it the importance that God wants us to have, okay? We know it's the strength in us that has done it and not we ourselves. That's truly being humble. That's truly going to the next level when we are doing it in the strength of the Lord. Amen? Amen. At the next level, the crowd does cheer. The next level, your morale is boosted. At the next level, momentum to keep going is a factor. Keep going. Keep going no matter what or how big that obstacle is in front of you. I don't care what it is. And I'm sure everyone sitting here and perhaps everyone out there knows exactly what I mean. There are definitely some obstacles in our life that look much larger and just have a way of like, you know, taking us down instead of up. Well, we need to let those obstacles always, 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 always take us up to another level, not down and shut us up or keep us stagnant. So if you're not there now, when you get there, I pray to God that this comes back to you in your mind, okay, that you're greater. The God God gave you, the strength God gave you is much greater than that obstacle in front of you. And don't let hell tell you any different. Okay. So at the next level, life is tangible, meaning it has actual physical existence, meaning that perhaps there are resources, more resources, there's more money, there's more houses. There, those things that, are, that are, you know, God desires to give you, which aren't bad, but at times, you know, there, this, this is part of the abundant life in Christ, okay? John 10.10, 10, that these purpose, and this is why, John 10.10, 10, that these purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. My purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. And that doesn't necessarily mean money, but if it does, if it does, then you know that it's because God desires to give it to you and for you to have it and for your, you to use it for his purposes. No false pride here. There's still humility in that. Okay, so that's very important to know. All right. Because at that point, the level, he knows that you will handle it in the way that he's asked you to, right? Amen? Okay. So growth is a requirement for reaching the next level to develop and expand whether that be you, whether that be the ministry you're involved with, whatever it is, we need to stretch ourselves. <laughs> and, and no one, I don't care how long you're sitting here, I know eventually if you get to a certain point, you'll say, okay, God, that's enough. But he, he knows that we need growth in order. We need to let God stretch us to keep us healthy and growing and where we need to be. Let God stretch. Once again, you can put the hand to it if you want. Because you know, God, this is as far as I can go, and I am not going any further. And we've all seen people who have done this, have we not? Others, not that we're judging, but that we've seen. And then what happens in their life? No growth, stagnation, or even going backwards. And we certainly don't want to be called there. So we need to let God to, um, to allow us, him to stretch us 
to stay healthy. Because like, you know, your education didn't stop at 12th grade. You're, you've stretched beyond that. All of us sitting here have, except the kids in the, <laughs> in the nursery. And they got a ways to go. Even if you've gone to college, I don't care how far you've gone in school or wherever, there's still another step. There's still another level to learn. We will never, never, never. And I think sometimes we don't say this and um, we, we just, you know, um, we think, okay, well, naturally, like, we know that. But do we, do we know this, that we never stop growing and that we can never stop learning? Do we really know it? Has it really been revealed to you? Because, I mean, I think, I'm just, <laughs> Lord, help me explain this. I'm just trying to um, help you to see that sometimes I think we think, oh, yeah, 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 I know that. I never stop learning yet till I, till I go to the grave or whatever. But, but do we? Because I guess then if we are, then you see, you see and experience that growth and do that growth wherever God is showing you to grow. Because, no, I don't know everything. No, I see it this way. But guess what? I've never seen it this way. Does that help? <laughs> Good. Amen. Okay, a little bit more food for thought, huh? So that anything that is alive grows. Richard Schwass says, discomfort is the cost of moving to the next level. And one of the fastest ways you move to the next level is to find mentors to teach you what they have learned. Mm, so very true. Even if it's just like Paul said, looking at the people that are around him, that God put him amongst to learn, to learn. I, I heard Al Ricker show the, uh, on the Today Show this week, I, I thought it was interesting and worth sharing, um, that he credits his growth, because he was just given a, a, big, a big award, but he didn't even mention that he was going to receive that award to his coworkers, P.S., okay? Um, and he's just, people were willing to share with that poor boy from Queens who, who knew nothing about broadcasting, who knew nothing. But there were people willing to share what they know in their lives. I thought that was pretty neat myself. Okay, so mentoring. For certain, you will not get there without growing in some very tangible way. So how do we get to the next level? One word as I see, and I'm winding up here, commitment. We all know that word. We've all heard it. I believe that it means to different people, different levels of things. I believe that it involves some areas for some and not other areas for some. But I believe that commitment is also something can, that can be taken to a higher level and certainly a deeper, le deeper level, meaning in all of our lives for the rest of our lives. I don't know if you agree with me or not, but I do, I do feel that way. I, and I've seen that's what I've experienced so far anyway. So commitment is a place of battle. Commit commitment separates winners from the whiners. <laughs> <laughs> and that is none of us, I want to add. <laughs> I mean the wanting part, not the winning part. <laughs> Commitment is a place where God reveals himself in the fire. So if you've seen God in your fire, in your battle, and you're not winning, in your, uh, where's, whenever, Lord, is the victory in this, you're going to see it. He's going to reveal himself to you truly there. Okay, so Second Chronicles 16, 7 through 10. The eyes of the Lord search the whole earth in order to strengthen those whose hearts, hearts are fully committed to him. And that's where we're tried in our heart with commitment. And when the easy thing really, truly looks so much easier to go to. I'm not saying it can't be easy at times, but it's not the place you want to go to if God's showing you to go to a more difficult place to overcome. Okay? What a fool you've been. From now on, you will be at war. <laughs> it says, Asa had a history of trusting God and avoiding idolatry. But in this story, Asa begins to rely on Assyrians for protection. 
God confronted Asa by sending him a prophet named Hanai. I'm condensing this. The prophet reminded Asa about God's powerful protection during the Ethiopian attack. Now, as a result of Asa's failure to rely on God, Judah's peace would end. And there's a reason, I do believe there's a reason I'm to be sharing this with you today, so I'm going to. So now, as a result of Asa's failure to rely on God, on hearing the prophet's declaration, Asa became angry rather than humble. So have you become angry, or has this made you humble? Which one? I mean, be honest with yourself. Take the veil off. <laughs> Look at God and say, am I angry? Or am I humbled by what you've shown me? The story of Asa reminds us how easy it is to start off with God and then fall away so easy in the beginning. It was so easy when I was first saved. It was just so easy. Yeah, it was then, but you know, 35 years ago, God since then, God's kind of expected us to grow a little bit more then. Till then, so <laughs> yeah, it was, but okay. We're faced with daily choices to rely on God or on human power. And we so sometimes want to rely on that human power, don't we? Yes, we do. God did give us each other for a reason. But if we're continually putting that human power before him, we're not going to grow. We're not going to get the right answer. We're not going to get the decision we need. We're not going to get the revelation we need, are we? In a spirit of honest introspection, ask God to show you if you are relying on him or on worldly supports. And then, and I think I'm going to end with this, Confess times when you've chosen to rely on yourself rather than on him. Let's go to the next level in Christ, and let's do this together, people. Amen? Amen. So we're, we want to um, confess the times when we've chosen to rely on ourselves rather than him and show and, and let him reveal to you the world the time you've taken worldly support instead of your own system because for instance like we need to break out of our comfort zone we need to pray we need to practice we need discipline we need to give we need to manage our time we need to share our faith and anything else that you might need to do that's how you get to the next level that's how you truly go from glory to glory. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Let's bow our heads and give that some thought. Father God, I just thank you that you are going to reveal to these precious people all that you want them to see, all that you want them to know. Lord God, let them not accept anything that would keep them from the next level in you. Let them not accept anything and say yes to anything that keeps them from the next level in you. Father God, we desire to grow spiritually. We desire to grow personally. We desire to grow together. We desire to grow in unity. Above all, Father God, we just desire to grow. We do desire to grow. Father God, we're not taking that easy road, that narrow road. Father God, we're choosing that uh, we, we are taking the narrow road. I'm sorry. We're not choosing the wide, easy road. We're going to take that narrow road that leads to your purpose and to your plan for each and every one of our lives. So, Lord, thank you for your faithfulness to reveal yourself to us. Take that veil away from our eyes as we look into your eyes and see what you see when you see us. And that we see you, Lord, that we see you and what you're saying with your eyes and with your heart to us. Father, turn, turn, turn our hearts toward you willingly, exceedingly, abundantly. You want us to have all that we could ever ask more or think of or even dream of. Father God, awaken those dreams in us. Awaken that single-eyed focus to what you are trying to show us now. 
where we are to be, where we are to grow, who we are to touch. That at the aspiration that, that you've given us, that goal that, that we set, that we stretch forward toward, Lord God, is not too great, is not too great to attain with you. With you continually with us. With you continually beside us. And like my son said, God is in you. God is with you and in your heart all the time. Father God, we desire to want what you want and what you have designed, especially for your chosen people, for your chosen one, for the one whom you love more than they could ever begin to imagine or think. So, Lord God, we just cast down right now in Jesus' name. We cast it all down and say it's not ours anymore. We take from that trading floor all that you've given us, and we give it back to you. That it's truly yours. You've blessed us with it. You've given it to us willingly. You've trusted us with that. You've trusted us. And I need to say it again. You've trusted us with that. Let, it, let us hold us as dear and precious, Father God, because it's from you. But let our hands off of it to grow. Let our hands off of it to grow because we put our full faith and trust in you. Let no words be idle talk. Let no words be, well, we're just saying this now, and we're going to go out of here, and we're not going to mean it. Father God, I pray, I pray that we believe this with our hearts, minds, bodies, souls, and spirits, and desire to live this way. That worldly resources, Father God, will not do that, will not provide for that, will not give you glory. Lord, we take our hands off of anywhere that we haven't given you the glory. We take our hands off of anywhere that we have not given you all the glory. And we say that it's your glory, God. It's for your glory and mean it. It's for your glory and we mean it. Amen and amen. Thank you for listening. For more, go to awakening-church.com.